Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us for another Apache Cassandra lunch. Uh, Happy New Year. Uh, this is going to be our first Cassandra lunch of the new year. We're excited to have everyone here with us. Um, apologies for the slight delay. Um, we'll go ahead and get started here in a second. Give me one quick moment. All right, my screen should be coming up here shortly. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Our speaker this afternoon is going to be Raul Singh covering Chat uh, GBT with Cassandra. Uh, the hosts for this event are Raul and myself. Um, as you already know, if you've been with us before, Um, we are looking for speakers and sponsors for this event. If you're interested in either of these opportunities, please reach out to me at the email listed below. Um, we're a part of Data Community DC, um, which believes in building an inclusive environment. Uh, so no matter your race, gender, or sexual orientation, everyone is welcome here and we're expected um, the same level of respect to be given to everyone here. Uh, data Community DC is made up of a lot of different groups, generally surrounding data. You can find out about each of these groups at the um, links listed below. Uh, so what do we cover here at Cassandra uh, at Cassandra Lunch? Uh, we cover everything surrounding Cassandra, um, Kafka, everything related to Cassandra. If this is your first time joining the Cassandra Lunch, we want this to be an inclusive community. Uh, please leave your name, how you found out about the lunch, and what you're hoping to gain from these lunches. Uh, we're excited to have you here. Uh, group rules. If you have a question, please ask it. As I mentioned earlier, we want you to be polite and courteous to everyone. And we definitely want you to share what you know with us. We're trying to build a community here. Um, uh, here at Not, we build and manage uh, global real-time and, and analytics platforms surrounding Cassandra, Spark, and Kafka. Uh, so you could say Cassandra is our bread and butter. I'd like to thank our uh, program sponsors, also our organizational sponsors. Um, we are running late, but I'd like to uh, open the chat uh, to anyone who may have um, any announcements, jobs, meetups, hackathons, conferences, um, please just leave that in the chat. We are hiring here at Anon. If you're interested in any of the positions um, listed below, or if you're looking for more information, please visit the site listed below. Um, a few uh, upcoming events that we have coming up, obviously we have our data engineers lunch and our Cassandra lunches. Um, we will not be having our data engineers lunch this coming Monday. Um, but I do want to point your attention to the Scylla DB Summit we have coming uh, mid-February. It's going to be a fantastic event. Um, we have more information on our events page. Please check that out. Um, Raul will be performing there as well. I'd also like to point, point you to our YouTube chat. If, you, if, you're, if it's your first time here, please make sure you're subscribed so you know when we go live with uh, our Cassandra lunches, our data engineering lunches, and any lunches we may have in the future. I'd um, also like to point you to Cassandra link. I'll be adding that. Uh, to the uh, to the live chat as well and then finally the latest version of our run book is available i believe for a few more days uh this edition will be changing very soon so if you haven't gotten it yet please download your copy now um i'll be leaving a chat uh, a link in the chat as well uh so please make sure you uh you download that while that's still available and uh with that i'll turn it over to our presenter for today raul raul over to you hey thanks uh Kui. appreciate it I don't know if I'll be performing at Scylla Summit, but I'll be giving a talk. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, I'm really excited about today's talk. Um, you pretty much have to be uh, under the, you know, have your head in the sand if you haven't heard about uh, chat GPT. Uh, you know, the GPT uh, algorithm uh, that OpenAI has created has been around for a while. People have, you know, uh, on the internet have uh, talked about DALI, um, but in November, uh, ChatGPT was a user interface that was, uh, you know, uh, made available to normal people uh, in terms of how to use this, you know, this AI tool. Um, and it has so many different applications that I don't even think I can do justice for just even our niche area of Cassandra and data. But uh, what I'm going to be doing is giving a quick introduction um, to uh you know what chat gpt is um uh i've read enough about it to understand 
the basics. I'm not uh, an expert at the internals of it. It's a paper. You can go read about it. it there's even uh, code um, and models. Um, you know, the the way that OpenAI works is that they make uh, this available to people. They don't always give everything out, but they make sure you understand how it works. Um, and it, it's a company that's funded a lot by it's a, it's a, by, by Microsoft, but uh, and, and Microsoft actually uses a lot of the technology. Uh, but because it's open AI, it, it also provides an API that people can use. And a lot of companies are actually using the API to enhance their customer experience, user experience. Now, today, I'm going to show you how you as a practitioner of things in the data world, in, in Cassandra, can use it. Um, uh, I don't uh, take credit for you know some of the stuff that I've got. I'll show you where I learned this stuff. But um, the more you use ChatGPT, the more uh, I think you're going to find it useful. I'm just going to give you some basic ideas. Uh, it's not going to be a long talk. Um, and I intend to have another follow-up uh, at some point. Um, and uh, you know, we're going to do a few different prompts uh, in terms of talking to ChatGPT. Um, and basically show what it spits back out. And we'll talk about whether it's useful and how can we tweak the prompts to make it useful for us. And it does learn as you as you continue talking to it. Uh, at our company, um, and not, we architect things. Architect means to design or make in computing. Uh, and we have a cool t-shirt that uh, if you uh, are interested, uh, you know, put your um, email in the chat uh, or actually, you know, just, Join our, our 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 channel, subscribe, and uh, you know put your uh, email in there if you want to uh, to be entered into a drawing to get a T-shirt. Uh, we are architects that help platform owners, platform owners that are trying to serve a global customer base that wants everything right now. They want everything in real time, and uh, the way we do it is we have a playbook that helps our, our customers design, build, and uh, manage their platforms, and sometimes we help them do it as well. As you can see, we work for a lot of folks uh, that uh, are global brands, national brands, uh, and and you know if you're using uh, any of these uh, technologies or companies, you're probably using a system that we've helped build uh, or help maintain. Um, the other thing is that the technology stack that we work with, uh, you know, the biggest brands in the world, they use them to run their platforms. Uh, we try to solve our clients' problems at the platform technology and management layer. They have their business problems, <laughs> their business uh, needs, and we don't necessarily come in and say, this is how you should run your business, but we try to understand uh, how to help them achieve their business goals with the right design of a platform. And then once we have a design, you know how to build it with the right technologies and then how to manage it going forward. So our solutions are basically based on our playbook of uh, you know how you design it. How, we have a reference framework that we use to help them build out things with options, and then we have an approach for how do you manage it ongoing. All right, so back to what we're talking about today: GPT and ChatGPT. So there is a difference, um, and you know GPT specifically um, is a generative, I believe. Um, Oh God. Uh, G it's the last word is transformer. That's that's what I know. <laughs> uh, uh, um, and pre-trained. That's what it's generative pre-trained transformer, meaning it has been trained on a ton of data. Uh, and uh, GPT, there was GPT two, GPT three. There's different algorithms you can use um, if you use the API. And essentially, you talk to it, and you can give it examples, you can give it things, and you just talk to it, and it gives back answers. So in this case, you give it a few kind of uh, ideas for, hey, uh, you know, translate English into French, I've given you these examples, what would this be, right? And in our world of technology, even though it has taken data, ChatGPT, by the way, has data until 2021, the other uh, open API uh, GPT uh, algorithms that you can use uh, with your with an API connection, they, they can actually go out and reach out to the internet and, and use things. But ChatGPT, what everybody's able to use, it, it has data until 2021. So it has scraped the common crawl, which is what AWS scrapes the whole internet and saves it on a big S3 drive, which you can also access. 
Um, and you can make your own model if you want to. So it has Stack Overflow. It probably has Cassandra Apache. It definitely has Cassandra Apache or Org Docs at Data Stocks. Uh, it, it probably has our early stuff from Cassandra.link in there, uh, Cassandra Tools. Um, so there's enough stuff out there on the internet until 2021 that it has scraped and mined and trained itself on, right? And it uses a neural deep neural network that basically, you know, it is trying to take the prompt and figure out based on all the different words it can give you in the next uh, as an answer, right? It's just completing your sentence basically. Um, it tries to find the most likely one. And so the model itself is a mathematical model. It's, it's a bunch of numbers and weights in a, in a neural, neural network, but it gives you the best one based on what it's been trained on previously, right? Um, and the way to make it smarter is that as you continue to talk to it and you give it examples, it starts to get smarter in your context, right? Um, that, that's what GPT is. You can learn more about it. There's in the blog post we published, we'll put some more references out there. Um, now, the GPT algorithm, even though it's available via API, normal people that don't know how to program can use chat GPT to do all sorts of things. They can say, write me, uh, here's my blog post, can you edit it for me? And it'll edit it for you, and it'll fix your spellings. Um, uh, I, I want to know how, um, you know, uh, what is the difference between Scylla, Cassandra, Yugabyte, Astra, and you ask it that question, and they will give you a pretty good answer. I did I did one uh, earlier this week on comparing Supabase and Firebase, which are kind of backends as a service. And I said, give me a 10-point comparison between Supabase and Firebase. And it went, boop, 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 boop. And it gave me exactly what I wanted to know. And I didn't have to go research it on my own. Um, here's a, a, a screenshot of the, what the interface looks like. Sorry, I'll, I'll bring it up if it's up. Um, because so many people are using it, uh, it is busy uh, and they keep scaling and they keep telling you it's available. Uh, in the first week, it was like a million users signed up, right? Um, so I just got some screenshots to show you. It's just a chat interface. You, you talk to it. And if you don't like the answer, you can hit try again. If you like the answer, you say thumbs up. Or you don't like the answer, you say thumbs down. You can edit your question and ask it again. Um, so what people have been doing now is they ask questions like, hey, can you make me a Swift app? that does this, this, and this, and it'll give you content, and you can paste it in your IDE and use it. And that part, I didn't believe it until I use it for like an HTML example, uh, uh, and then I started using it for like data stuff, and it's pretty cool, right? It's pretty cool. Um, I will show you, uh, you know, after I go through this, I'll show you uh, if it comes up, uh, what the ChatGPT interface looks like. Even if it doesn't come up, uh, I'm going to use the API to run the prompts. Uh, it's not ideal, but you know, uh, it'll be it'll be at least effective in showing you what it's capable of. Uh, ChatGPT3 API is available. You get $18 of credits. Uh, there are roughly 20 different algorithms. The fastest ones are like 0. 0.0004 cents per thousand tokens, which is about 750 words of generated text. Um, the best one, Da Vinci, is two cents per thousand tokens. Um, the when you use ChatGPT, you don't pay for anything, and it uses Da Vinci, so you get the best answer. <laughs> so that's why you wait for ChatGPT to come up. Um, now, go, GitHub Copilot, if you've used it, you can be writing something and it'll complete your code. Well, that's GPT. That's what it's using. Um, uh, Duolingo. Uh, you know, uses it to provide corrections. I actually, am, I, I'm a paid subscriber of, of Duolingo now. I'm learning a few languages, so that's pretty cool that it's starting to use it. Um, and, and there's tons of applications. There's all gallery of applications, uh, tools like Jasper for content writing, Writer. They all basically wrap open APIs, GPT algorithm to provide a user interface. Now, the question that you probably ask is like, what the hell, what the heck does this have to do with me? I'm trying to, you know, create an application that gets data in and out of the Cassandra database, or I'm trying to, you know, bring up Cassandra and, and see what's happening, or, um, you know, I'm trying to make a decision whether I want to use Scylla or Cassandra or Astra, right? What, how is this going to help me? And the way it can help you, uh, that's what I want to show you, is that think about it like a, an expert that has memorized the whole internet and understands you, and it will try to do, give you a pretty good answer to at least help you get in the right direction with whatever whatever you're trying to do, 
And that's the beauty of it. It's not just giving answers. It can give you code. It can give you commands. It can give you stuff that maybe if you ask your coworker, hey, how do you do this? They'll tell you exactly what to do. Uh, just note that uh, ChatGPT has been banned by Stack Overflow because people were answering questions with it um, because it is not the expert. It's just giving an approximation of the right answer. And so, you know, if people just copied and pasted GPT generated answers and somebody's, uh, you know, and it just creates a bunch of answers that are no good, uh, ultimately the value of Stack Overflow goes down because you expect humans to give you the answer. Now, that being said, what I'm going to show you, the answers are pretty good. You just have to take it with a grain of salt that maybe it's not the exact right answer. You still kind of have to know what you're doing, right? You can't be a complete, completely oblivious to what the Cassandra system is about or, or how you create data models. But hopefully you'll, you'll see how uh, it can it can be useful to you. So, uh, and I'm going to run these through uh, either ChatGPT if it's up or through my uh, API runner. Um, here's an example, right? Um, and I, I found this on the, the, the OpenAI website, but it was for like Postgres. Uh, but you can say, here's my table of customers and columns, um, you know, and, you know, this is my table. These are my columns. Create a Cassandra SQL query for all customers in Texas who have spent $5,000. Now, you can also use it for data modeling to say, you know, uh, here are my, here's my table name. Here's my columns. Uh, can you make me a Cassandra table that fulfills this query? Right, because Cassandra, you, you generally create tables that have um, that are designed for queries, right? One partition per query, um, and but this just a query, you know, it'll tell you. Okay, um, here's another one, and I'm going to try this out to see what it gives me. You know, here's a PostgreSQL table. There's three tables, and I want a new Cassandra SQL table to list the names of departments which employ more than ten employees in the last three months. And then you just write create, and it'll fill out the rest of it for you. Okay. Uh, administratively, here's how a question I would ask if I don't know what's going on. If I'm learning, what are the most common no tool stop commands for Apache Cassandra, which can help me understand the health of Cassandra cluster, which I run, can I, uh, which I can run in SSH? Uh, what is the Cassandra YAML setting I need to set to improve how fast Cassandra compacts data? Right. I could go to uh, the Cassandra YAML documentation, or I could ask ChatGPT. Uh, data engineering. I have a file in list with the following fields. ID, name, title, create date. I also have a Cassandra table called data. Can you write me Spark, PySpark code to read from a file for AWS S3 and save it into a Cassandra table? Right? Now, you can understand that these are type of things that you'll find on Stack Overflow, and somebody will give an answer, and you'll read it, and you'll say, this is how it applies to me. But when you're using ChatGPT, you're actually getting the answer contextual to your question in real time. You're not waiting for somebody to come back to you. I'm not saying it replaces humans, but the ability for you to move through whatever issue you're facing um, immediately, that's a very, that's an amazing promise, right? Okay. So now, not questions right now. Let me show you. So I, I have a bookmark for ChatGPT, chat GPT, um, and you log in with your open API uh, account. So I'm just kind of log in. Thank you. So it actually came up for, for me. Normally, uh, it gives me a different screen. It looks like this, at least over the last couple of weeks, which, is, which has gotten very popular, right? Capacity. So um, excellent. Now, you can use the other questions, right? Um, and, and it usually keeps my, uh, my previous conversations here so you can have like different threads. And a thread is important because when you start a thread, Everything you've talked to it about previously, it has known. And if you liked or something, you didn't like something, it knows that. So every new thread is like having a conversation with a new instance of, of ChatGPT, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the prompts um, which I have. Sorry. Uh, I'll just open it up over here. I think I closed my presentation. There we go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste it. Okay. Um, 
I actually have a, an automation also that can do all of them at once, which I'll I'll show uh, if we have time. Again, I promise this was going to be a short talk. So, for example, um, this is this is the answer it gave me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the same question again, right? I'm gonna go and just copy this, and I'm gonna say. This is my table, you know, customers, columns, et cetera. I'll create a Cassandra query for all customers. Okay. And I can also say create a Cassandra table, create statement, and a Cassandra CQL query for all customers in Texas who have spent over $5,000. Now, I've, I haven't done this before. Um, there's there's a plugin that I got that uh, it's called Web Chat GPT. It's a Chrome extension that gives you this little enhancement, which is you can then ask it to go to the internet and get answers also, uh, but it doesn't do what I think is the core feature of GPT. This is useful if you're doing research and it'll get the latest stuff and it'll summarize it for you. So I'm not gonna use that, okay? So it's taking time. And as it starts to answer your question, you'll recognize what it's doing. It's it's basically predicting the next best possible word to give you to make this a correct completion of the threat, right? Because it has seen questions and answers from people all over the internet, for, you know, and it, of the, all the scrape data, right? And essentially it's saying, what is the thing that I should do to complete it? And there, there you go. It starts creating. Now you notice that this is not exactly CQL, right? Because it didn't give you a clustering column, right? Because that's how, you know, uh, potentially you, uh, or it didn't have, um, it's not taking into account that it's a Cassandra table versus a, an SQL table. Um, but in the past, I've talked to it in my previous thread. I've said, this is not SQL, this is CQL, can you do this again for me? And it did it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to change my prompt here. Let's see. Um, with primary and clustering keys. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and run it again. It takes a second. We'll let it go. And while that's happening, I'll, I'll tell you where I got inspired uh, to start using this for uh, like Cassandra stuff. So there's an article, uh, again, it'll be in the blog post, where this guy uh, essentially gives it an instruction, right? Given an input question, respond with the syntactically correct Postgres, blah, 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 blah. Be creative, with, but that skill must be correct. Use only tables called users and charges because it's giving it a prompt pre preface. And then you can ask questions and it generates SQL for it. Right. So maybe I can change my prompt to say it has to be syntactically correct Postgres, be creative, but the CQL must be correct. So I might just do that. Right. But this guy just goes through and explains how he was trying to, you know, use this and give people a natural language query to an SQL database. Right. Um, and it actually works pretty well, but he did notice that it's not exact. Right. It starts making mistakes because it doesn't, it's just doing SQL, it's doing text completion. Um, so I'm going to change mine to say create a syntactically in, in syntactically correct CQL. Okay. And I'm going to leave the query part of it out for now. Please give me. And what I'm going to do. Yeah, this is good. Please give me a Cassandra table create statement. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And while that runs, um, here's another example I'm going to run, which is here's my Postgres table with these properties, create a new Cassandra SQL table to list the names, right? And by the way, it's usually not this slow. Uh, I think it's at cat capacity and it's, it's taking some time. Um, now, what, what I may just do is I may pivot to using, uh, oh, it's still been primary key. I may pivot to using my uh, make.com scenario to just take a bunch of Airtable records and just get the answers. Yeah, I'll just let it do its thing. Okay. 
Uh, the next thing what I'll do is, oh, actually it has something in there called clustering, but it's not exactly CQL. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, give them a request to produce CQL. Please use syntactically correct CQL that is used in Apache Cassandra. Okay, and then I'm gonna copy this. Say, given a, oops, wrong one. Given a Postgres SQL, given Postgres SQL with their properties, um, produce a new Cassandra SQL table to list the names, blah, 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 blah. Okay. And so you go ahead, see what it does. And uh, again, it's usually not this slow. Um, while that's kind of running in the background, I'll show you uh, how uh, to use the API. So uh, I have a very simple uh, make.com scenario. Uh, and what it's doing is I have an Airtable. Um, I'm pretty sure I could connect it to like a REST API against Astra or a REST API against, uh, I don't think it has a CQL connector yet. Uh, make Make.com doesn't. Um, and uh, I have a few of these prompts in here, right? Like what are the most common no tool subcommands, right? And my automation, all it's doing is that if I go in here and I say, do this, um, do this, and do this, okay? My automation basically watches this, um, gets in a modified record, because I have this deal here, and it runs it against OpenAPI, uh, and I'm using this, DaVinci 3 model, which is the cheapest one. And Ada, I believe, is the, is, uh, sorry, the DaVinci 3 model is the best one. It's the most expensive one. And Ada is the cheapest one, okay? And so that can use any of these. Um, uh, and, and each of them has a description. I can write about how these are different, but I kind of know about Ada and, and, and DaVinci 3. I'm going to try Ada. Um, okay, no, I'll wait. Let me, let's try to get the best one. Remember that each um, uh, thousand tokens is about two cents for the DaVinci one. Uh, I'm saying about max 300 tokens, which is up to about, I don't know, like 200 words or so. I don't really want more than that. And um, I'm giving it a prompt. And where's the prompt coming from? The prompt is coming from my table. Okay. Um, and there's other use cases of this. And that maybe we'll do a data engineering lunch on, you know, how do you use no code in data engineering? And what I get the answer back. Um, the answer comes back like this, and it gives me choices, okay? And it's an array of choices. So technically, I could iterate through the array of choices and add them into different records. I'm just expecting one choice back, okay? And, and the reason I'm expecting one choice back is because I've given it. Only give me one completion. I could, it could ask it for several completions, right? Um, and so if I go ahead and double check, I've got three options to do. Let me go ahead and run this. You notice it's taking time. Did one. And we'll just watch this. And in real time, it's answering these questions for me. Let's see what it gave for. What are the common no tool commands, blah, 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 which I can use. Well, status, TP stats, compaction stats, gossip info, net stats. Uh, this is a little uh, dated, I guess, CF stats, although it will work. No tool repair. Okay. And actually, if I were in chat, I would say, can you explain more how to use no tool repair? And it would actually continue to explain it to me. Um, here's another one. What is the Cassandra YAML setting, right? I need to use to uh, improve how Cassandra compacts data. And it tells me. The setting we need to use to improve the speed of Cassandra compaction is the compaction throughput MB per second in Cassandra YAML. Setting this to a higher value will result in faster compaction data. 
I mean, I, I already knew that, but I don't memorize the exact setting. I use my brain for better function, but it basically got me the answer I needed. Um, now this is the this is the data engineering one. Um, I have a file. I want to put the data into a table. Give me code, and it basically has given me starting point for a Spark program, PySpark program. Um, and as you notice, like it doesn't exactly know where my stuff is, so I have to go tell it that, right? Um, but it it's giving you a starting point, and uh, this is just scratching the surface. This is just scratching the surface for what this is capable of doing. Now, what I'm going to do now is just clean house on this, and I want to try the faster algorithm, the cheaper algorithm, to see if it's any good compared to, you know, Da Vinci. Right, I'm going to go back to my make scenario and this. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and run it. And it should run it five times because um, now you'll, you'll notice it's giving me a bunch of stuff. It's fast. Okay. But it's kind of garbage. All right, it's not what I wanted. It just used stuff that it found on the internet and said, try this out. Uh, basically, not useful, right? Not really useful. Um, and, and, and that may be because this algorithm is better at a different type of prompt where Da Vinci is just better at understanding the type of prompt, okay? Um, and notice like it's like getting the type of stuff that like people would ask on Stack Overflow, right? Let's see if this is any better. Nope, no good. So quick experiment shows that uh, ADA is not that good. Um, anyways, back to uh, the, the chat interface, right? Let's see what it gave us back, okay? So, aha, create table departments employees, primary key department ID by date, employee name, clustering column, Okay, because remember the query, I said list of names which were employed more than 10, which, which employs more than 10 employees in the last three months. So it needed to have date um, as part of the, I guess, the department, given department. Uh, and it says, here's my query uh, after it creates an index. Now, may or may not work depending on what type of, in, you don't even know what type of index this is. Um, and it's giving you this, this query definitely is not going to work. Okay. But at the very least, it did make a table with a primary key and a clustering column. So that's kind of cool, right? Um, it assumes a department ID and employee corresponds to the department table, and it gives you kind of like what, what is the assumption, all right? So again, not exact what I wanted, but at least it gave me something to start with. Um, and if I look at the same prompt with the, this is a slightly better, right? How it formats it for you. So if I ask the same exact question, and again, it's going to take some time. And while that's running, I'm going to use, uh, let's see. It was Fabish, I'm curious. Okay. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set these all to do. Oh. And I don't really need to empty these out, but I'm going to go ahead and empty these out. Okay, run. And so Babbage doesn't seem like that great either, right? It's just getting some random stuff. It looks kind of like it's related, but it's not. So again, Babbage not so great. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with my DaVinci. Um, DaVinci 03. And if I wanted to preface, uh, at least in this automation, say, right, um, given the request, uh, give responses back for only, that only work for Apache Cassandra database. 
which uses SQL and not oh, sorry, not CQL, not SQL. Okay. And and then I, you know, I'm just appending my 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 actual prompt uh, to that. So I can preface what I'm saying here. And uh, you know, maybe I'll give it a little bit more. I'll give it 500 tokens. And uh, if I run it, oh, it's not going to do anything. This makes it all done. Fine. And run. And notice I, I have a filter in here that says don't do anything that's not, you know, Marcus view. It's taking its time. As you notice, text eventually takes time. Um, or by the way, these are my old prompts. I didn't really edit these. Um, uh, it's still hmm, interesting. Now this one seems slightly better, actually. Uh, and then we have no tool, okay. And then we have. <laughs> the setting you're looking for is incremental backups. Okay, that is clearly not the right answer. Uh, um, and then their Spark code is slightly different here. So judging um, from this experiment, right, um, the API does an okay job, um, the, the text of NG3, but definitely looks like the chat GPT has got a better algorithm and it presents the data better. Um, so for example, I asked it for some code and it gave me this code, right? Uh, it tells you what to install as a driver. It tells you how to connect to your uh, Cassandra cluster and it tells you how to save to Cassandra. It ex it's basically explaining um, how to do something when I, if I had no idea what I was doing with Spark and Cassandra and S3, basically gives me a starting point. Okay. Um, so that's all I have for today. Uh, I, I didn't want to go too deep into this. I just wanted people in the Cassandra community to understand what is it out there from ChatGPT that could be useful for me. And this is what it started out with. And I'm going to continue coming back with, um, you know, maybe how to use it from a data perspective uh, on another talk. Uh, any questions on the chat? Uh, no, it doesn't look like we have any questions. If you have any questions, please drop them in the chat uh, while we close out. Um, I do like to point you guys to our run book. Like I mentioned at the start of this uh, talk, we'll, we'll be releasing a new edition next week. Uh, so please download that if you haven't already. It is free. Uh, grab that while it's still available. And um, please check out our events page on our website. Um, Scylla DP Summit is coming up in February. Um, it's going to be online. I encourage you to register while you still can. And um, yeah, it doesn't look like we have any other questions in the chat. So just want to thank everybody um, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we'll, we're looking forward to this new year and more lunches. And we'll see you guys same time, same place next week. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Zachary. Take care, everybody.